What I want to have a look at in this video is a couple of web filtering options that are available in various Defender 4 endpoint plans. Now, the plan I'm going to use here is P2. Uh, there is also a P1 and an upcoming Defender for Business that will be available. They do have similar features, but please do check to see the, whether the version you have includes these specific features. So therefore, you may see some differences in the menuing system between what I show here and what you have if you do have another plan. Now, to get to these web filtering options, first thing you need to do is to obviously have Defender uh, for endpoint one of the licenses uh, in your environment and also assigned to users. When you do that, you'll see these additional options in security.microsoft.com. So this is how you know that you do have Defender for Endpoint uh, up and running. Now, the location for the um, common web filtering we find down here under settings. And then if we go into endpoints here, one of the options that we do have that is displayed is this web content filtering. So we would select that to configure that. Now at the moment I have no items in there, so there's no filtering being done. So I'm going to go in here and add an item. Now I'm just going to call this policy a default policy, so we just give it a, a name. Now I get to choose which of the general categories that I want to block. So let's say that we want to you know, generally block all of them. We can expand these to see what they include and we can go in and make individual selections along here. Uh, if we so choose. But again, generally you want to be able to uh, block all of this content, right? So once we do that, the next option then is to define a scope. Now, if you have the more advanced plans, you can use something called uh, device groups. Device groups allow you to target specific groups. This feature isn't available in all plans with the vendor for endpoint. So again, just be wary. If it is not available, then any filtering will be targeted to all the devices in your environment that have been onboarded to uh, the Defender for Endpoint. So in this case, I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm just going to target all my devices and I'll go next. I'll get a summary here of the block categories. I'm blocking everything. Again, you can choose to customize that if you want. Down the bottom here, you'll see that I get confirmation that the scope is going to be all devices. So I will save that that will then create the policy and start applying it rolling it out uh, to my devices now remember that this policy won't be applied immediately my experience is it takes around 40 minutes microsoft tells us you know somewhere over 30 minutes to actually roll out my experience has been probably around the 40 minute mark uh, in my testing now if we need to go in here we can go and click in here you'll see that we can delete uh, this policy if we want we can modify the uh, categories, but we can't really do anything else uh, with the scope. So we'll keep that uh, basically as it is. All right, and close that up. And what we'll do now is I'll just show you what it's like after we do wait the prerequisite amount of time for um, you know that policy to work its way to our devices. Now, when it does, if we go to, for example, a block category here, so let me go to um, you know, gambling.com, you'll see that the content is blocked here uh, inside the Edge browser. So inside my Microsoft browser, even in the in private option here, you'll see that it is blocked and we do get that message uh, there thanks to that uh, policy that has been uh, configured. Now, if we go back to a third party browser, so in this case, I'm using Brave. So let's go to um, you know, that same site again, just to see what the result is. All right, so in this case, you'll see that we get a window security alert down in the bottom right hand corner. We also get the fact that um, that site has been blocked thanks to that policy. So again, uh, this is coming courtesy of the onboarding that has happened with this device and the policy that uh, is already in place uh, in the environment. So again, that's how we go in and create that policy and what it looks like when it's applied. So remember, again, this is a very general policy uh, and you can only select from the categories that are listed in there. Now, if you do want to get a little bit more customized when it comes to you know blocking or, or auditing potentially uh, items in your environment with the web uh, filtering, what you can do is you can go in here, you'll see there's an option called indicators. What we're going to do is select that. And in this case, you'll see uh, 
in a sec, you'll see that basically I've set up, um, already set up a number of you know, custom uh, indicators here. Now the idea with this is you can go in and specify you know, unique file hashes, IP addresses, certificates, but in this case I've gone in and I've set up uh, basically two uh, domains, two URLs in here that I want to uh, take action on. Now if we go in here and actually have a look at them, you'll see that again we've got an indicator that allows, relates to the browser. This is the URL that we specified now. With this custom indicator, what we can do is we can select to allow, audit, warn, block, and also generate a, an alert. So that alert will potentially appear in our console and also be bubbled up into Cloud App Security and potentially Sentinel as well, so very handy. We need to give it a title, so my advice is make sure that it is a meaningful uh, and descriptive title. We can choose the severity and the category, so you'll see there are lots of different options that we can access and a description. And again, if we do have more advanced licenses, we can target this at a scope uh, of a device group as well, so that's really handy there. Now, what we see basically is a very similar result when we try and navigate to either of these two block sites um, on uh, an endpoint on a device, but there are some caveats when we do that. So if you have a look at a device that I'm connected to remotely using the Microsoft Quick Assist, so this is a device uh, in the environment that's been onboarded to Defender and also has that uh, those custom indicator policies applied. So if I open the Edge browser here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go to, you know, those uh, one of those uh, indicators that I've indicated that I do want uh, to have blocked. So if I go to, for example, uh, YouTube. All right. So you'll see here that again that content uh, is blocked. So again, if I go into the in private session uh, in my edge environment and basically do the same thing here and we should expect to get the same result so let's go to youtube.com okay so again we get the same result now where the caveat here applies if we have an encrypted site basically using https and we try and use a third party browser, uh, we're not going to have that filtering. So if we go in here uh, and we go and go to that same indicator, you'll find that unfortunately that uh, site will not be blocked. Now, the reason be is because it's using you know encryption HTTPS to uh, achieve that. So that is one of the caveats around that. There is a number of these that are listed on the Microsoft site. So I'll put a link in there so people can go and have a look at what they are. But inside Edge, uh, both private and normal sessions, uh, that is going to work exactly uh, as expected. And the way that we did that, we went into our um, settings, endpoints, went into indicators, and then basically went in there and we added an item which we can do through the web interface. You'll see that we've also got the ability here to uh, have it also expire if you don't want to have it uh, running or blocking all the time. Now, you'll see here that we can also import uh, a number of items in bulk here into our indicators using a standard uh, CSV file. So we can put those into a CSV file and upload those as well. The other option we've got here is with the Defender for Endpoint, we've also got the capability to uh, go in here and we can, for example, access things with an API. So what I can do in here, I've written a script and you'll see the script goes out and then you know goes through and displays the uh, block capabilities here that have been uh, set up here. And you'll see that if I want, I can also uh, go in and I can uh, basically go in here and do the same thing and I can set these uh, as well. So what I could do in this case, you'll see here that I'm setting Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. If I go back to uh, this environment and go back to my domain URLs, you'll see that those additional uh, indicator sites have been added with the parameters that I want. So this is really handy uh, when you want to go in and control access to websites 
with devices that have been onboarded to uh, Defender for Endpoint. So that's the first caveat, they do need to be onboarded. Uh, then you can go in and you can set the general filtering here under web content filtering. Remember, you can only use the categories that are defined, but you can have multiple policies here if you want. Uh, and if you have the more advanced licenses, you can scope that to particular devices. If you want to go in and target specific you know, file hashes, IP addresses, or URLs to block, in this case I've chosen social media, then you can go in and add the individual item there. Now one of the really good things with the custom indicators is that you'll see that you do have the option of allowing auditing warning uh, and not just blocking and it will also generate a report for you as well. So some really handy options there and we can do that manually, we can do that with a CSV import and we can also use PowerShell to go in and configure that using the APIs. So again, really handy capabilities to be able to do that in bulk uh, if you do need to do that. Now remember that this web content filtering is part of Defender for Endpoint. Some of the features and capabilities may vary, but depending on which Defender for Endpoint license that you have, in this case, I've demonstrated it using the P2 license. Thank you very much for watching the video.